Welcome to another episode of No Tears for Black Girls, a true crime podcast with a purpose. Written and produced by award-winning author John Reedberg. I'm your host, Samantha Paul. Let's dive in. Such a disturbing case, the DA says he plans to conduct a thorough and transparent investigation. The victim's family at a loss for words. They are looking for answers. At the Hines County Pauper Cemetery, Dexter Wade is buried in plot number 672. Wade was laid to rest after his mother reported him missing earlier this year. It took police months to let the family know what happened to Wade. Jackson, Mississippi. It was March 5, 2023, the day Betterston Wade would come to find her son had gone missing. In the months that followed, she searched for any trace of him. Until one day, 172 days later, she received a call. Her worst fears became a reality. A police car had killed Dexter Wade, and yet, it seemed his story wasn't even close to finished. After her first fateful call, Betterston spent two weeks going back and forth with the authorities about the burial location of her son. Finally, the authorities took her to a pauper's field, where her son would remain in an unmarked grave for eternity. Grave number 672. She didn't know how this happened, which made matters worse. But when she started piecing together, the events of March 5th, the date of their last conversation, Betterston stepped into an unimaginable tragedy. On March 14th, Betterston had to make the agonizing decision to report her son missing. Her brother's death two years ago pained her as a reminder. A Jackson police officer had taken his life in an act of unnecessary brutality. They had convicted the officer of manslaughter, but as was typical for cases involving police officers, he was appealing and the family had sought justice through civil action. With a heavy heart, Betterston called the Jackson Police Department in hopes they would find her son alive. Yet a deep-rooted fear lingered in her mind that this could end up becoming another needless tragedy for her family. As she made the call, she drove home an important point. Why many black people still dreaded dealing with law enforcement, even when they needed help. Because they still feared and distrusted cops. Betterston knew something was amiss when she called the authorities, yet they brushed off her concerns. For 172 days, Betterston battled to uncover why her beloved son had vanished from this world, only to be met with silence from the officials she pleaded for help. The police department refused to respond to questions concerning Dexter's unfortunate demise, forcing reporters to piece together what happened via a coroner's investigator, court records and documents obtained under public records requests. Through her heart-wrenching journey of discovery, Betterston shared personal notes, emails, Dexter's death certificate, a coroner's report, and case information cards provided by the police to NBC's John Schuppe, all to uncover the truth behind Dexter's disappearance. The clock showed 8 p.m. on March 5th when Dexter Wade walked across Interstate 55. A tragedy was about to unfold. The Jackson Police SUV, driven by an off-duty corporal, struck him in the southbound lanes without warning. Without performing a field sobriety test or issuing any traffic violations, the authorities determined Dexter's death to be an accident. But what happened next remains a mystery. LeGrand Elliott from the Hines County Coroner's Office found a bottle of prescription medication with Dexter's name on it in his pocket, the only way to identify him. But when investigator Elliott contacted the medical facility for next of kin, he said he called and left a voicemail but got no response. It wasn't until August 24th that Dexter's mother, Miss Betterston, received the phone call she never knew she was waiting for. Her beloved son had died three months earlier. The investigator revealed he had provided the Jackson Police Department's accident investigation squad with Betterston's phone number and address as soon as he could, so they could notify Betterston's mother of Dexter's passing. But this news would reach her family too late better than a month after his death, when his kin had spent months searching for him. To add to their misery, the Board of Supervisors approved the coroner's burial request on April 3rd, with no one claiming his body. Only on August 24th did Betterston finally receive the devastating news, raising questions about a potential link between her brother's case and the delay. Even after she paid the $250 fee to claim Dexter's body, it took more weeks to find his resting place. She had to schedule an appointment in early October to visit where her son was buried. The investigator revealed a horrifying truth. 
that the Jackson Police Department had received Betterstein's phone number and address from the very beginning. Yet they failed to contact her about her son's death for months. She watched as the Board of Supervisors declined to take action until April 3rd, a month after Dexter passed away. No one notified Betterston until August 24th, an excruciating delay during which she shared desperate pleas on social media, searching in vain for her son. Adding insult to injury, she even had to pay a $250 fee to reclaim his body from the coroner's office. She visited the place where her beloved son was laid to rest in early October, all because of the case involving her late brother. In a stunning twist of fate, Betterston Wade has called upon renowned civil rights activist and attorney Ben Crump to seek justice for her son, Dexter Wade. In an emotional appeal, Crump made a fervent plea for transparency, justice, and accountability in Dexter's case. The impenetrable wall of silence surrounding Dexter's death and the alleged cover-up of evidence is a gut-wrenching tragedy that exposes the seedy underbelly of this community. What makes the situation even more wretched is the fact that the police officer involved was off-duty. This heartbreaking story is a testament to how far we still have to go as a nation toward justice and equality. I absolutely think it's an open and shut case, Envy, but when you're dealing with the police in America, y'all, and black people dying in highly suspicious, controversial manners, nothing is clear cut. Mm -hmm. We have to fight for justice at every point, every turn. And I, I, I am waiting, Charlemagne, to see what their story is. You know, they don't have an official response yet. I was going to ask the, you, what are they saying? Like, how are they explaining this? Yeah, the mayor said, obviously, there was a, a great miscommunication there. But we have the Mississippi Bureau of Investigations, they said, is going to do an investigation. But I don't really trust them as much. I think we're going to have to do our own parallel investigation. We may have to get the feds to come in because, man, if this was your loved one and you had a lawsuit against the city and they didn't tell you about they had a car accident with your son who was a pedestrian and then they buried him in an unknown funeral cemetery mm -hmm. and then say, just give us the benefit of the doubt. Right. Who in America would say, no, no, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Because every day I go in courtrooms across America and I see black people who, if you take them at their word, made mistakes. Yes, but right. they never get the benefit of the doubt. Right. It's always, no, no, we got to uh, make sure we administer justice and have accountability because we got to send the message. Well, I think Jackson, Mississippi, there needs to be a message sent over Dexter Wade for his family, his two little children, his mother, all these people for seven months. Can you imagine the agony of not knowing where your son is, where your yeah. father is? Yeah, so, we say we say nobody's above the law, but it always seems like the law is above the law because I don't understand how this is legal. I feel like this should be criminal off top. Just, just the fact that she had to look for her son for all of that time. And the fact the no, cop hit him. And you knew exactly what was going on. I have a question for you, though. So if the body is exhumed, I know that they're talking about possibly doing that just for a proper funeral for the family. Is it too late to do an like you know in your separate investigation additional autopsy like because you know the longer you wait things get different. Now that's a great question, Lauren. In fact, Colin Kaepernick's uh, uh, group institute we've worked a lot on doing uh, independent autopsies, and to his credit, he has done almost a dozen with my law firm where. Uh, I remember the case in Georgia where the bed bug infestation killed the brother in the jail. Colin stepped up and offered to pay for that autopsy. And so I know he's, his people are already talking about doing that here. But one of the things we got to do, we got to go get a court uh, petition to exhume the body because you just can't go dig up a body without mm. getting permission from the court. Mm. So my office is going to have to jump through some hoops, but we do intend on getting a independent autopsy and having a proper funeral for this young man so his children will know that his life mattered and hopefully you know jackson mississippi will know that they can't sweep this under the rug because had that mother given up charlemagne envy mm -hmm. it would have just been swept under the rug like it didn't matter but that lady exactly. kept saying somebody knows what happened to my child right 
Now, Attorney Benjamin Crump, what about cameras, right? We, we talk so much about cameras being on police officers, so they had to move the body. We talk so much about dashboard cameras on the police car, so that would have seen him actually got hit. Uh, do we have any of that footage now? Was it erased, or, or how does that look? You know, DJ Envy, <laughs> they have, they're supposed to have dash cam videos on their car. I would suspect what they're going to try to uh, defend or articulate is they didn't have their emergency uh, cameras on their flashing lights and sirens, so the, da the dash cam video would not have come on. But we're going to look at every aspect of it. Certainly when they hit them, somebody body camera should have been put on or something. Right. We should be able to see what happened to this brother and we understand that he died from the injuries from the car accident. We are not even sure if they took him to the hospital. He may have been dead on arrival when the ambulance got Man. there. Poor baby. Just a couple more questions, Mr. Cornwell. One, really. How, how often do independent autopsies change the course of cases? Oh, Charlemagne, it's so important. Anybody who can afford it, if there's a death in custody case, I, I implore you to please get an independent autopsy because you cannot trust the uh, medical examiner or the coroner, the local coroner, because they work with the police every day. It's like the prosecutors work with the police every day. So there's an implicit bias in favor of trying to help craft the narrative that best and is most advantageous to the police narrative. What the police want to probably say here, Charlemagne, is that we didn't know uh, it was, uh, you know, we did everything we could. We just didn't know who the young man was and all this stuff. And then we didn't see need to get an autopsy or if we got an autopsy, they're going to try to craft it where it helps the Jacksonville police not be charged with homicide. They're going to try to make it some easier charge if we get charges at all. NBC's John Shoup is the reporter with this story. John, we're glad to have you with us today. Um, it is, uh, the, the details here are just extraordinary, right? Because essentially what happened here is this seven month long mystery for this family, despite police apparently, according to official accounts, knowing for months who they hit, where he was buried and not reaching out to the family. How did this happen? That's one of the questions that we have is how exactly it happened. But we know some details uh, and a sketch of what happened. It began, as you mentioned, on March the 5th, when Dexter Wade, he's 37 years old, left home and never came back. It turned out not far from home, not long after she, he left, he was struck and killed by an off-duty Jackson police officer. A coroner's investigator arrives at the scene, takes his body back to the examination table, finds a prescription bottle of pills that has his name on it. The coroner's investigator calls the hospital where he got the pills, gets the next of kin, who's his mother, Betterstein Wade, and forwards that information on to the Jackson Police Department's accident investigation squad. Meanwhile, the mother, Betterstein, has no idea that any of this has happened. On the 14th of March, reports him missing to the missing persons unit and for months is checking for updates and searching for him and gets no answers. Meantime, there, it's not clear why, but she was never told that they had him in the, in the morgue the entire time. So ultimately, someone figured it out within the Jackson Police Department and let her know. And that's when she realized that while she was looking for him, they had assumed in the coroner's office that he was unclaimed and arranged for him to be buried in a pauper's field. And so as you showed the pictures just earlier, a minute ago, that moment came a couple of weeks ago where she finally got to see the grave marked only with a number of where her son is buried. Mm. I know, John, that you and the team pieced this together from interviews with his family, the coroner's investigator, court records, documents provided in response to your request, a crash report, incident reports, other documents, office records. I mean, so much of this, it took, it took a lot of putting some puzzle pieces here just to get, I think, some sense of what happened. And yet through it all, as of tonight, have you gotten any response from the police department itself? None. Um, as soon as I, just before leaving to come talk to you, I was reaching out to the city. Um, they're preparing some sort of response, but I'm not sure that 
they fully comprehend of how this mistake was made. Um, mm. We have we have notes, internal notes and documents that show what they knew. It's just not clear yet about why it was shared. Well. What does accountability look like for this family? Just quickly, John, what does that look like? I think for Betterstein Wade, the mother is just somebody to acknowledge that there was a mistake. She can accept if an accident was made, but just an acknowledgement and an apology. Okay. She just wants to be heard, it sounds like. John should be. Thank you so much. Love us? Leave us a positive review or rating. Follow No Tears for Black Girls on social media and No Tears for BG on Twitter. Be blessed. Be loved. Stay safe.